uh, three times the charm, okay? Um, okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, you will remember uh, that prior to the break, we were covering bridge test, uh, perfectly enough. And uh, we had started a discussion of coverage at the very lowest level, the edge coverage, which is a common type of coverage achieved by traditional test tools. It's reflected in statement coverage at the level of particulars of code. What fraction of statements have been reached? But we noted that node coverage actually achieves a quite limited uh, degree of coverage. Okay? Um, if we simply pick each, say, basic block here, shown in, uh, uh, with, with letters here, for example, often we miss some key elements for discovering bugs. Can anyone remind me, what are some reasons that, that just hitting a statement might <coughs> fall grievously short of revealing a problem with that code? Now, there's a specific functionality that is used to reach that code. Yeah, yeah, so it, it, it doesn't test in a, any sort of thorough way, the ways in which that code would respond to different ways of getting there. And often with, with our code, we're left with a situation where, you know, for, for one way of getting there, um, we, we will, it may work, and for another way, it won't. Um, and I'm just going to go back to, a, uh, to an example we used to, to illustrate this last time, um, which may seem a very long time ago indeed, where you know, maybe we have a, a pointer that's null along a certain con so-called control flow path. But along certain, depending if, if you approached this statement, you know, uh, dereferencing key head, assigning, to, um, to the thing pointed to by p head. Depending if you approached it through this, the conditional of this if, or if you just fell through, you might get very different results. Just because you reached this statement where you dereference p head is no indication that it's going to work reliably. There may be lots of bugs that could be found here if you just approached it the right way. And so, simply reaching a point in the code does not, does not really raise a great deal of confidence that that code is correct. It, it could be. If you never reach it, um, I'm not sure how you'd have confidence that it's correct. But if you do reach it, maybe it was just happenstance how you reached it. You reached it the right way, but another way would blow up, as it does here, right? If you, if you just fall through here, you don't go into the if this blows up. Um, so maybe you were just lucky and you, you picked this, this path and you checked off, yeah, we reached that place, but not, it's, it's not enough to inspire, uh, inspire a great deal of confidence. Um, okay, so with transition coverage or edge coverage here, we proceed to exercising transitions at least well, each transition, each possible way it could go um, is, is tested at these points. Now, we'll come to back to it for loops because some of you may be wondering about, about loops. But if we have, say, a loop we test at least that we do the fall through case where we don't do the loop and we do the loop at least once uh, for an edge based test. Okay. Um, and we're going to need to find inputs, particular specific test cases that will exercise that inputs, will cause it to go that direction. Um, and occasionally you'll have to, and sometimes it's not so occasional, you'll have to reason about things that can't be realized realistically because they're based on impossible uh, conditions. 
Um, so instead of doing something like this, where we, this is through a black box sort of test, where we reach each state via some scenario, we, we're going to do something like this. So cancellation, for example, with, um, with this uh, case here, um, all we did was we confirmed that the system works if you cancel from the main state, but not if it was already paid. That would be a weak level of testing, a very weak level of testing. With transition coverage, we'd make sure that we check cancellation, but we do so cancellation of different sorts, different in its context, how it was canceled. For example, following payment or following ticketing. All of those lead to a canceled state, but we don't rest on our laurels and say, yeah, we test cancellation. You know, we, we were in the canceled state. Instead, we test each way we could get there. Instead of just saying we, we are here, we test each possible way of, of, uh, of getting there. Okay? Um, so that's transition coverage. Now, let me, let me ask, is, is transition coverage, uh, is it exhaustive? No. There's certain things we won't do. For example, we won't examine each possible combination of conditions. We won't test each possible number of times that a loop could be executed, for example, is, is another example. And indeed, let me ask this. Do you think, in principle, one could achieve truly complete path coverage? So up here, at the very top is complete path coverage, where you exercise every possible path through the system. In general, do you think that's possible? And why not? You speak well. That's what you said is true. Why is that? This is, yeah. this is true. Yeah, and in general, there's an arbitrary number of, of, of um, possible paths through the system. Imagine you're testing a Linux-based system. You can't test it with all possible command sequences because command sequences could go on for arbitrarily many, many sequences. You can't possibly try all, all possibilities. You can't test a loop you know, that's a, a redevelop print loop um, in a infinite number of times. Uh, if you could, you could solve the halting problem, which for those of you in the room who know what that means, you'd realize that um, that's a clear indication that this is, is, is infeasible. So in general, complete path coverage is not possible, but there are still some pretty big gaps with transition coverage and combinations of conditions are one of them that, you know, maybe this works if, if you take, you know, any combination of foo and bar being true except both of them being true, in which case it blows up. It requires you to, to go through the consequent case, the case where it's true for both, for it to blow up. Um, transition coverage is, um, is, however, much stronger than state coverage. Um, you know, state coverage here, uh, in this case, um, uh, could be achieved through simply one path here and zero and one and two. Transition coverage, by contrast, requires two paths and zero and one and two is one of them. That's this one here, this path. The other one is N0 and 2. Okay. So transition coverage does require um, uh, does require more testing. When we're reasoning about transitions, though, some important considerations come in. And to motivate this, I'll just remind you of this key thing, which you know I I emphasized before, and I often emphasize on the exam. Um, give me the three basic steps of coverage. This is true for path coverage, node, transition, prime path, 
you remember this, you'll be walked clearly through that. As it turns out, it's also true for logic coverage, which is time allows for coverage. So the three key steps are low. Regardless of whether you're seeking to cover prime paths, or so you're reaching, seeking to reach all prime paths, or all transitions, or all nodes, the first thing, the first job you have is to identify those things. So if it's prime paths, you've got to identify the prime paths. And Thursday, I'll be showing you how to do that. If you're trying to cover transitions, you've got to enumerate all transitions. These are the set of transitions in my code, or my system, that you're doing black box things. Step one. Step two is we need to identify paths through the system, abstract paths. Not test cases yet, abstract paths from start to finish that include all of the things we need to cover. So if we're trying to hit prime paths, we need to find paths that go from the start to an end that will collectively, they will cover these prime paths. We're interested. If you're trying to cover nodes, these abstract paths, these from start to finish, need to collectively cover your nodes. So we want to go this way, we want to go that way, we need one that goes like this twice around and then finishes. These are abstract scenarios. They're not concrete yet. In the third step, we, discuss, we define a set of concrete test cases that will exercise those abstract paths. We figure out how do we steer the system in those paths so that, that those abstract scenarios are realized. Okay. Um, and so this is where we get into specific inputs that will realize these, these, these scenarios. Okay? Um, and the test cases will generally exercise additional things, additional paths beyond those covered, but it will cover your paths. You're looking for that set of inputs um, that will cover it. So, so if we have something like, um, just trying to remind you with a little uh, test case here. Yeah, here. Um, this is going to take us back a couple slides, but um, it won't be prohibitive. Here we go. Um, so here, suppose we want to cover transitions. We would list the transitions. Can anyone start listing the transitions here? Well, there's A to B. And then there's B to C, and then there's B to M, and then there's C to D, and C to E. And I can continue, but I think you get the point. Right? Those are the various transitions. Those are the things we want to cover, I suppose. Then we're going to try to find ways, abstract scenarios, ways we can wend our way through the system. such that we hit all of those different transitions. So we need, and you folks did this last time. And you did it with alacrity, okay? Um, so you identified scenarios through the system that would hit, for example, all of these Blocks, the nodes, there was no code cover. But I, I could ask you at the same time to, to create scenarios from start to finish that collectively, together, would cover all of these, these transitions. So you might say, well, look, um, we'll have one that goes this way, and it will come down here to L, and then it will go to B, and it will finish up. We'll have another one that comes down this way. And Instead of going D to F, it's going to go G to G, and then uh, G to H. And conceptually, you're checking off each of these transitions you hit, right? And you can have another one, and it goes from G to I instead of G to H, and then down to L. And you're, you're checking them off until you, 
you've covered all the transitions. But those are still, you're only talking about steering and directions. What you haven't gotten into is how to steer it. That requires what, ladies and gentlemen? In the final of those third steps associated with the three steps of coverage, what does the next step require? So you're defining these abstract scenarios that kind of steer it different ways such that collectively they cover all the things you want to cover here, transitions. But what do you still have to do? In the third step, you, um, so Camille? Make the concrete test cases. Yeah, the concrete test cases, the specific inputs. Mesa was probably going to say the same thing. The specific inputs that will steer it this way. Okay, it's all great to say, yeah, we'll have it go this way and that way and that way, you know, and another one, but how? And for that, you gotta start reasoning about, okay, so under what conditions does it do C to E, right? Like, what will get it to do C to E? What does there need to be in the string here so that it will go from C to E at this point? And you have to say, well, you know, I would need a plus, right? I need a plus. It's have to go that way. And so we have to have a particular input that will have a plus, you know, in it. Or suppose maybe, uh, you know, we had to go A, B, C, D, F, L, and back to B, and then C, you know, E, L, and then to B and M. Well, to, to do that, the first thing would have to be this percent sign, um, and then the second thing would have to be a plus to get it to go that way. You see what I mean? It's like we're steer, we want to steer it a certain way, and we figure out how to steer it using these test cases. Hmm? Concrete test cases that collectively will allow it to exercise all of the abstract scenarios you came up with in step one, so that you can cover all of the specific things you want to cover as identified, excuse me, as the abstract scenario uh, step two, to cover all the things you really want to cover in step one, the, 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 the um, nodes or the edges. We okay with that idea? Okay, so hold on to that because it's going to be important for my interpreting my next comment here. There are times, ladies and gentlemen, there are times where we will have things that we can't achieve logically. So we may have an abstract test case, for example, where we want to steer it this way. This is actually not for software system for a process of some sort. Process assisted with maintenance of fixing of devices. Um, and these are the abstract scenarios that we want to test, maybe. Make sure the process, and maybe we have an IT system that keeps track of where things are and we want to make sure that it's working for each of these cases. But you notice sometimes you have to watch out because there may be something that's not possible you may want to steer it, for example, along this red path. But there's a problem here. Why is it a problem? Why is that red path a problem? I say, why is it problematic? Wiggle me that. Yes, Evan. Is that edge unable to repair? And then after that, it's successful repair. So that just doesn't make any sense. How could it be unable to repair and then be repaired? Okay, so so uh, I, I see what you're saying. I think in this case you need to interpret this as being if at the maintenance station, which is kind of a, an intermediate depot where they have less equipment, less uh, less sophisticated uh, personnel to fix it, less uh, you know maybe they don't have an oscilloscope to test things out. They can't repair it there. Then they then they send it to maintenance. So, so, so that, that needs to be interpreted in context. But there's another thing that's after that. I admire your, your speaking up, this is key. And there's, I, I'll tell you, there's another reason, and it's actually written here. What 
is, what is the key inconsistency here? So you're exactly right about looking for inconsistencies. What's the inconsistency with the red, with big red? Yes. Um, there would be a U.S. EU resident to yeah. start the path. That's right. But you're, the path, you're, not the you're not EU or U.S. resident, right? So there's an inconsistency here. The, the thing that will steer you down this way, the, the way in which you would achieve this in your concrete test case, runs afoul here. So you have to actually sometimes watch out when you're defining these abstract test cases that they're realizable given the conditions involved. Um, uh, that you know it it doesn't lead to a logical inconsistency. Okay. Um, so you can get cases like this. Uh, and you, you want to watch out when you're trying to reason about how to steer it through the, the system. Okay? Um, now, uh, what I was planning to, to get to uh, today, if possible, but I recognize we might well not, given uh, the pop quiz and the discussion, is this next step. Going be, you know, from the key steps in the coverage procedure, Reflecting on the fact that we've covered some basic levels, node and edge, I want to talk about prime path coverage. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, we will need some definitions and an algorithm. Okay? Um, I'm going to wait to cover this next time. Because between now and then, it is my turn to take once again a seat and to, to enjoy the pleasures of, of uh, learning about your, your projects. So next time, we're going to go into prime path coverage. And prime path coverage is notably stronger than edge coverage, than node coverage, and indeed, even than pairs of edges. It provides another level of thermos that tests loops, that tests, that tests out the system in ways that are more rigorous even than pairs of, of possibilities uh, involving transitions. And so that will be our quarry for next time. Okay? Um, but at the present moment, I will uh, cede the floor as is the natural order of things to the next generation um, and uh, proceed to allow team two to set up, right? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that right? Uh, no, no, it's team, uh, it's team two, it's team two, right? Um, yeah, um, so even versus odd. Um, so team two will uh, may may assume the podium, okay? And I'm going.